Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. This week we have an explosive question. Could you explain how to shoot fireworks? That's right, a bunch of people have asked the same question. And since the 4th of July is just around the corner, this week we're gonna be talking about shooting fireworks. Well, fortunately, shooting fireworks is pretty simple if you know the basics. So this week, I'm gonna be giving you eight things you absolutely need to know to get perfect fireworks photos. Number one, use a tripod. A tripod is very important because you want to eliminate all of the camera movement. You're going to be shooting with really long shutter speeds and so what that means is if your camera moves at all, the fireworks that should have nice straight lines are going to have nice wiggly lines and you don't want that. So a tripod is the starting point. Number two, use a cable release. Now once you have your tripod set up and you have your camera mounted, the next thing you need is a nice cable release. Now what the cable release is going to do is it will plug right into your camera and it will allow you to release the shutter without actually touching the camera. Now I know that seems like a small thing, but any time that you uh, put your hand on your camera to press the shutter release, it's actually causing some vibration in your camera and it's going to cause that to have wiggly lines in your fireworks photos. So you don't want that. You want your tripod and your cable release to work together to make sure that your camera is absolutely steady. Number three, use a wide angle lens. This lens is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It's a really wide angle lens. And I suggest that you start using a wide angle lens when you're shooting fireworks. Now the reason for that is at the beginning, you don't, you're not gonna be really sure how to frame your photo. And so you'll stand a much better chance of getting those fireworks exploding in the sky if you can see more of the sky. And a wide angle lens will allow you to do that. Now once you see some of those fireworks going off and you uh, get your uh, framing sort of tuned in. The nice thing is you can also include other elements in your photo like these pictures where we have the lake and some of the trees and stuff and we get a nice reflection of the fireworks on the lake. And so a wide angle lens is going to allow you to get more information into your camera. And so that's where I suggest that you start. Number four, focus just shy of infinity. Now when you're shooting at night, your autofocus is just not going to work. So you need to make sure that you have your lens on manual focus. And to make sure everything is uh, really nice, sharp, and in focus, just focus your lens all the way to infinity and then come just shy of that. So go all the way to infinity and then just back off. There is a uh, distance meter on most lenses, so you can see the infinity symbol there. Go all the way there and then back it off just a hair. Number five, use manual mode. Now also because we're shooting at night and we're shooting something that will be exploding in the sky, your auto exposure isn't going to work either. So you need to make sure that your camera is set to manual mode. Number six, shoot with an aperture around F10. Well, since you're shooting in manual mode, you need to start by setting your aperture to the correct value. Now that's very subjective because the fireworks will be brighter or less bright depending on how close or far away you are and the size of the fireworks. So a big super state fair fireworks session is going to be a little bit brighter than something you might see in your backyard. So I suggest that you start with an aperture value around F10. Now, if you look, you know, take a couple pictures and look on the back of your camera, look at the LCD screen. If things are too bright, well, uh, go up to an aperture value of maybe F16, something like that. And if everything is too dark, well, open up your aperture and go to an aperture value maybe of F8 or even wider. Number seven, use a slow shutter speed. Now, since you're shooting in manual mode, you'll also need to set your shutter speed. Now, I suggest that you use a very long shutter speed, maybe something between three and six seconds. Now, the reason for that is you want your uh, shutter to open when the fireworks start to explode, and then it needs to stay open as long as those fireworks are trailing in the sky, so you get that really nice big full look that we all love. Now, even better is if your camera has a bulb mode. And if it does, you can get better results. Now, what bulb mode does is it allows you to press the shutter release, and then it holds the shutter open until you let go. And so what you can do is when you see the fireworks go up, you push the shutter release, it opens the shutter, and as soon as it starts to trail off, close the shutter, and you're all set. So use bulb mode if you can. Number eight, shoot with your ISO at 100. 
Now, because you're shooting at night, you might be tempted to increase your ISO to something like 800 or even 1600. Well, don't do that. You need to keep your ISO as low as possible. So try to shoot at an ISO of 100 or maybe 200. And the reason for that is those fireworks are really bright and you want to get those nice exposed, but you want everything else to remain uh, dark. And so shoot at ISO 100. That's going to make sure that your exposure is right. And it's also going to make sure that you don't have any noise in your image. Well, there you have it. Those are eight things that you can do to make sure you get great fireworks photos. Now, a special thanks goes out to Deborah Ward. She's a former student of mine, and she provided these terrific fireworks pictures for this week's episode. Now, remember, if you have a question about photography or photography-related gear, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com, and we might use your question in an upcoming episode. And we also have all of the photos that were in this episode and more tips for shooting fireworks at the Adorama Learning Center. So check it out for more information. Well, thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.